Okay, we're continuing on with James two fourteen, and we're gonna, you know, which is our key passage here. Remember that Ophelos means profit. See the lexicon below. Advantage, profit, benefit. Okay, he's talking about it in monetary terms, as an investment, because he's already in, introduced the investment concept in chapter one, and he's talking now about the poor versus the rich investment, which he also began in chapter one. He's now threading those all those concepts into chapter two. That's your context. He's talking about the word in you as an investment. Now, if you didn't understand that at this point, go back and view the prior videos because I'm going to have to get real fast now about how he's building his points. Okay, so we got Ophelos here, right? That's this word here. That means profit. It's talking about investment yield. Okay, we also just saw that Pistin should have a teen, teen in front of it if it was talking about your faith but instead it's talking about the word in you so the word tain is missing it's very conspicuous in the Greek so it means the word because it's stressing divine quality and then to go with that divine quality we also have the word erga here which is the, the accusative neuter plural common you can see that in lower window but the word ta is missing that's the definite article that should be there if it was talking about your works it would have ta erga but it's not talking about your works it's talking about God's works because it's talking about God's word Pistin, no article erga no article so this word faith here is talking about God's word in your head okay and the works are talking about God's works not your works so it's not your believing well, it is believing, but I'm just saying it's what he's stressing here, just like he was in James 1 3, he's talking about the word works, the word produces. The word produces profit. Ophelos. Pistin. God's word believed in you. Okay? God's works, therefore, are going to result. That's the theme from James 2 14 to James 2 26. He's talking about the production value of the word believed in you and so that's why he's asking this question to start off the, the rhetorical style the Socratic reasoning going on here can the faith the word by itself just sitting in your head heard but not believed can that do anything can that rescue your soul remember we saw in James 118 and James 121 it has to be implanted not just memorized so he's drawing an analogy between word that's just rattling around in your head, a hearer, not a doer, versus the word that's implanted. You believe it, so that makes you a doer because all a soul can do is believe. You believe or you don't believe. That's all a soul ever does, is it thinks. And it thinks pro, that means you believe, or it thinks con, that means you don't believe. That's the parallel he's setting up, and he's talking about what constitutes true wealth, true profit versus physical profit, versus the poor guy versus the rich guy. So that's your context when you go to when you start looking at James two fourteen. That's the actual Bible context, not what men say, but what the Bible is saying. And you and hopefully now you've seen the threads that he's brought through from chapter one. In, in here in the 2.14. So now we can go a little quicker now. So when he says what use is it, he's saying what profit is it. Let's switch to the King James because that's a little better at tracking King James. Okay. Which version of the King James is that? 1611 and 1969. Okay. Alright. What is a profit that if a man says he has faith, remember he says he has the word in him, but and that's the word itself. But there's no divine works. Can the word just sitting in his head save his soul? No, because he's not believing it. That was the problem the Jews had before they were saved. They had the word in their mouth. That's what uh, Paul was talking about in Romans 10:10. You got the word in your mouth, so believe it already. That's the context of Romans 10, 1 through 10. Because he's drawing an analogy to Deuteronomy 30 there. 
Okay, well, he's getting that from James. Of course, James is getting it from Deuteronomy 30 also. Okay, you got the word in your mouth. You say it every Saturday. Oh, God, he's God, he's God, he's Lord, Christ is Lord. Okay, but do you believe it? Okay, it's got to be believed to be profitable. Okay, and then it's going to result in divine works. That's been his theme since James 1 3. James 1 18, James 1 21, James 1 23. And then he's threading in James 1 9 and 10 on poor versus rich and favoritism versus begging the question of what constitutes true wealth. Remember, this is how he starts James 2. Okay? Respect of persons, favoritism. All right. So here we are in verse 14. Now, he's going to make another analogy to physical wealth. If you're naked and destitute, you just say, oh, be warm. But you don't do anything. You don't give them anything. So what's the profit in telling them See, he's drawing an analogy to mouthing the words. Oh, you're mouthing words to them. You're not, there's no, there's no, you're just mouthing words. Yeah, just like they were mouthing words every Saturday. I deny Elohim, no, the word is in my mouth, but I don't believe it, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well then it's not productive. There's no profit. Just like there'd be no profit if somebody who was hungry came to you and all you do is wish them well. That's an analogy to having the word in you that you hear, but you don't do. You don't believe it. Okay, so he's taking a soul analogy and translating it into a physical analogy. Where's the prophet? Wishing them well is not going to make them get fed. All right? Now, what he's saying, and it is relevant here, is that since they're despising the poor guy, all right, if they're despising the poor guy so they won't even give him a good seat in church, do you think they're giving him any money for his hunger? Of course not. Ye have despised the poor. See? You're despising them. So he's going on with that because that's what they're doing. They're despising them. Okay? They're poor, all right, and instead of doing something about it, Okay, the word, the law is don't despise the poor. Help them. Okay, but instead they're just giving them warm wishes. Alright? So those warm wishes aren't going to profit the poor. They're not going to feed them. They're naked. They don't have any food. It's not, this isn't welfare. Okay? These are people who, you know, they're naked. They don't have any food. This isn't giving them, giving money away. This is clothing them and giving them food so they can go on and live another day. Well, there's no profit to just wish them well. Alright? So he's drawing an analogy. Do you get that? He's drawing an analogy to having the faith in your head, but you don't believe it. So there's not going to be any divine works. Alright? 